What's up makers, Mike Clifford here, and this time I'm industrial maker. I'm going to show you how I created this exploded river table with brass rods running down the middle and a live edge sassafras slab. So that only begs one question. Should this be called a sassafras table or a brassafras table? For now, let's see how it's made. I've had this sassafras slab lying around the shop for quite some time and in addition to being just the most fun thing in the world to say, sassafras is apparently a very easy wood to work with and this slab in particular had some really cool undulating edges that seemed like they would be good for a river table with a lowercase r. Now, since I'm going for a modern look with this table, I decided to remove all the bark and sassafras bark is very easy to remove with a chisel and I went back afterwards and hit it quickly with a sander to remove whatever the chisel didn't get. No epoxy river table here guys, sorry. But because the slab has some voids in it, we're going to fill those with epoxy to stabilize them. I'm gonna go ahead and use some red transparent dye. Yeah. Why transparent? Well, because quite honestly, I'm just not a fan of all the sparkly pigments that people are using in epoxy. I think five years from now, we're gonna look back and wonder what the heck we were doing, put all this plastic glitter in our beautiful wood slabs. But just my opinion, write it down. We'll find out if I'm right as time goes on. Anytime that you're using epoxy, you want to make sure that you seal the cracks on the underside. So I just used some aluminum tape here, which conforms really well to the shape of the wood and seals it off nicely. I flipped it over and mixed up some epoxy. For this project, I'm using an inexpensive one-to-one -one mix epoxy. Since this project, I've actually switched over to using another that's a bit more expensive, but easier to work with. And I'll link to both below. And it's just a trade-off between price and convenience. And a few minutes with a heat gun removes all the air bubbles from the epoxy. After letting the epoxy cure for 24 hours, I came back and used the trick Johnny Builds came up with where you take a heat gun and heat up the cured epoxy. It softens it up and makes it really easy to scrape away with a chisel. In the past, I've always ended up resorting to use of a belt sander to remove epoxy, but because of the chisel trick, I was able to remove the rest of it with a random orbit sander. Next is the point of no return. Cutting into the slab always makes you nervous, can't go back. Now for this one, I had to measure and mark a spot that I just thought looked good. It didn't have to be precise measurement, it was really just by feel what would look good when it was split down the middle. So I marked out the straight line and got out my track saw to cut it down. The next step is to figure out how I want these two halves to align. So I can just set them flat on the table and I can slide these back and forth to figure out the river shape that looks the best. Then after the table is done, we'll cut off the excess part of the slab at either end. I also got out the brass rods and started figuring out the layout for them while I was aligning the slabs. So if you noticed while I was playing with the table layouts, I had this idea to make the rods turn gradually and go with the flow of the river. However, if I did that, I would never be able to get the pieces of wood together. So I decided the brass rods should just be straight, parallel to one another, and evenly spaced down the table. So what you see me doing here is just using a speed square to mark a line every five inches where I'll drill a hole for one of the brass rods. I then laid out the two sides of the slab in the exact position that I wanted them and used a straight edge to transfer those lines that I'd drawn on one side of the slab to the other side. So that then hopefully when I drill holes for the rod in either side of the slab, they'll line up and be parallel to one another so I can easily put this slab together. Cross your fingers. So you could use a drill press to make sure that you get the holes for your dowels drilled exactly on the lines where you need them. But to keep this simple, I'm just gonna use this Rockler doweling jig. So this jig is actually designed for three quarters inch plywood and it's designed to put the hole exactly in the middle of the plywood. This slab is actually gonna be an inch and a quarter thick. So 
I want to get the hole set back from the surface a bit further. So I took this apart and put in some washers between the top plate and the drill guide. And when you put it back together, you got to be careful. I just use a little machine square like this, super handy to have. And make sure when you're reattaching these pieces that the drill guide is still perpendicular to the top plate. I then used Rockler's T-Track clamps to set the slab up vertically so I could start drilling the holes for the brass rods. This process is really pretty straightforward. You just align the mark on the center of the dowling jig with the line on your wood and drill the hole. I just drilled each hole as deep as it would go and didn't really worry about the depth because I really just figured that the more of the rod extended into each side of the slab, the sturdier the tabletop would be. And with this in mind, I went back after using the dowling jig and used the existing holes as a guide to drill as deep as my quarter inch drill bit would take me. I then laid out all the brass rods and marked them with a sharpie so I could know the length to cut them to at each location. And these are really easy to just cut with a metal hacksaw by hand, so that's what I did. You could also cut them using any other woodworking tools. And by the way, these are just all 12 inch brass rods that I picked up on eBay and they were surprisingly affordable. I always thought of brass as a more expensive material, but these really weren't too bad. Then it was time to assemble the tabletop. And the first step here was just to put all the rods into one side of the slab and use a mallet to pound them down so they were nice and snug. I then used Rockler's T-Track clamps to lock down the other half of the slab so that I could line up all the brass rods with the holes there and use a mallet to pound them together and get the joining process started. Once I got the rod started in the other side, I could flip it vertically and use my mallet to pound the two sides together and finish up the tabletop. Okay, so we've had a slight change in plans, kind of actually a bank error in my favor. I was going to use epoxy in the holes for the rods to make sure that they were secured to the slabs. However, after I did a quick test fit of them, I actually couldn't get the two sides of the slabs apart because it was so height. Uh, so I decided to just to scrap the epoxy idea and leave it after the test fit. I did go back with some Gorilla Glue, which is going to expand inside the holes. And I think it's pretty darn solid, so I'm just going to roll with it. And before we finish the slab, we're going to have to cut it to size. So when I was laying out the river, I chose to focus on the shape of it without constraining myself to keeping these edges parallel. So what that means is I'm going to have to go back now and cut this edge parallel with that edge so that when I cut it here and here, it'll be a perfect rectangular shape. Once I'd cut out the final rectangular shape, all that was left to do before finishing was give it a quick sanding up to 240 grit. To finish the tabletop, I used Maker Brand Simple Finish. And this is put together by Chris Salamone, Ben Ueda, and Mike Montgomery, some of my buddies over from the Modern Maker Podcast. And they did a great job on this. Uh, not a sponsor or anything like that, but they just sent me this to try out and I really liked it. It really was super simple. You just wipe it on, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then wipe off any excess. I repeated this process twice and it got a really nice finish on the top. Now I should have polished the brass rods before assembling the table by using the trick where you put them in a drill and spin them to make polishing easy, but I like to make it difficult. So I just end up using some high grit sanding pads followed by steel wool 
and then came back with Brasso polishing compound to finish them off. And this was a little more work, but it worked out and shined them up pretty nicely. So I know a lot of you out there don't have the ability to weld in your shop and I actually don't right now either. So I decided to order some prefabricated legs from a place called Outlaw Woodcraft on Etsy. I found out actually after I put the order in that they are a subscriber to this channel. So show them some love. I'll put a link in the description below if you need some steel legs for any of your projects. When I ordered the legs, it didn't quite measure accurately. And so one of the legs actually had a little overhang that would have extended into the river. So I went back with my angle grinder and trimmed that off, which also meant I needed to go back and redrill the holes for the quarter inch screws in that leg. To attach the table legs, I initially used some hammer-in threaded inserts. And I don't recommend these because they actually started pulling out later. So off camera, I had to go back and replace those with some inserts that actually have the threads on the outside to secure them in the underside of the slab. All right, guys, I had no idea how this experiment was going to turn out. And in the end, I'm just enamored with how this combination of brass and sassafras came out. Hope you guys like it too. If you do, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, let YouTube know it really helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. I also want to know what should I call this thing? Sassafras or brassafras? Leave a comment and let me know. And if you like seeing behind the scenes stuff, and what I'm doing before it goes live on YouTube, make sure to head over to Instagram and follow me there at Medustrial Maker. And if you haven't already, make sure to click that subscribe button and hit the bell button on YouTube so YouTube will notify you whenever my future build videos go live. Also wanna give a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Rockler Woodworking. Thank you, Rockler, for supporting the channel. It's much appreciated. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.